With the end of Season 1 of Street Fighter 6 approaching and the release of Akuma in the Season 2 balance patch, it is time to do my first ever tier list for Street Fighter 6. And whenever I do a tier list video, I always have to start off with a little notice that tier lists are kind of trash, okay? They offer a very at-a-glance look at the meta of a current game and often lead to vast misinterpretations of character's strengths and weaknesses. So I just want to get that out of the way that with this tier list, if a character is, you know, in top tier, that does not mean they are unbeatable. And if they're in bottom tier, that does not mean that they cannot win any matchups. Like quick thought experiment. If a character has a slight disadvantage matchup with every character in the game, but only slightly, meaning that they're totally capable of winning any individual game, they're probably going to be ranked really low in the tier list. However, that does not mean that they cannot win a game. So if a character is ranked bottom tier, that is not implying that they literally cannot win a set or win a tournament. And if they are top tier, that does not imply that they are literally unbeatable, right? So it's going to give you an at a glance look. And we're going to use this to really discuss the meta of season one going into season two, because now we know the most about the game at this point. And this game, this version of the game is going to not exist soon, right? That's the reality of our digital live service type of games that we have these days. Season one of Street Fighter, six will not exist come two weeks from now so let's take a look back at season one and let's do uh the first ever tier list on this channel for street fighter six all right i'm probably just going to go in order here just go through the characters as they are and we'll just give a little bit of a snippet about each character discuss their strengths and weaknesses and this just build this you know as we go here that's kind of the plan so first one on the list ryu i'm gonna go ahead and drop ryu <sighs> C tier. Uh, actually, I might put him in B tier, given his recent buffs. I'll put him in B tier. So Ryu, he he has tons of damage. He has good fundamentals, decent fireball game. Actually, a pretty good fireball game. I think his weakness is like the dungeon charge system makes his fireball game weaker, which they're going to actually address in the next patch. His buffs to Hashogeki and his burnout pressure are really good. Hashogeki, the, the fast one, now being um, actually plus on block, you know, when they're in burnout. It's actually a huge difference to his game plan and his ability to mix in pressure with fake strings and stealing turns with Hashogeki. So I think Ryu's gonna be in B tier. We'll see how this shakes or ships up around him, but he's very solid. He just doesn't have the same explosiveness in terms of mobility. His drive rush is slower. He doesn't have the same ways to carry corner to corner like Ken does. So I think a solid B is pretty safe to say with Ryu, which kind of makes sense. I mean, generally the games for Street Fighter are, they tend to be balanced around Ryu. So I think Ryu and B tier, we'll leave him there for now and see where it all pans out. Luke, 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 Luke. That, uh, listen, I don't even have to tease this one. <laughs> I feel like you might've wanted me to build suspense there for uh, the narrative. Luke is S tier, easy. This character, I think he's the best in the game. I think his damage is obscene. I think he has the best normals in the game. Crouching medium punch just makes almost every other character obsolete in return. One of the best low forwards in the game, low forward drive rush, amazing fireball, hit scan fireball. His ability to both have extreme explosive and safe confirmable offense from his really good range crouching light punch, which allows him to stagger jabs and hit confirm or go for tick throw pressure. And then um, his really good throw loop game is stand heavy punch, which covers huge ridiculous amounts of range and it shits out damage if it connects. All this stuff ties in together for him to have a really strong offensive flow chart. But on top of that, when he burns his drive meter to extend his offense and that doesn't work out, it's very easy for him to walk back and then suddenly start playing the lame game and just throw fireballs and DP with some of the best fireball DP gameplay we've ever seen in Street Fighter and then just allow his resources to build back up and then do it all over again. And if you get hit, you die. So Luke, to me, he's probably the best character in the game. We'll see if my opinion changes over the course of this. I think he's just the, just the best. I, I think there's no weaknesses in this kit. It's plus on block, crouching medium punch, six frames, little to no pushback, combos into itself on trade and <laughs> on hit. It's just such a spammable move and it's so good. It does everything like it just I just feel like he makes other characters redundant. Like there's very little reason to play Ryu over over Luke competitively. And so for that reason, Luke is an S tier. Chun-Li, you know Chun-Li? She's going right up here as well. I don't think Chun-Li is as strong as Luke, but I think Chun-Li in the West at least is extremely underrated. Her normals are bizarre, and which is always kind of her her signature deliverable, right? Her her really good long range pokes. But on top of that, she has like these laser jabs and mediums that go so much further than you would expect. And she's also able to hit confirm her mediums. Her ability to play a really strong uh, poke game, but also then to set it up over and over safely behind, I believe it's light fireball where she can walk behind it and then approach behind the fireball. So 
She can get her safe offensive pressure. If it doesn't work out, she can back up, throw fireball and repeat it over again. And then her up kicks, it's extremely fast and her fireball recovery is very good for the type of fireball she's using. So she basically gets like meterless, the, the same kind of idea of having like uh, a fireball into dry rush. She gets the same thing meterless essentially. And then of course, on top of that, one of the best level twos in the game, like right below the install level twos, the fact that it does so much damage in corner carry lets her do juggles after extensions and she's building meter during it. She's one of the few characters in the game that the safe jump pressure really matters beyond just securing a little bit of drive chip because the fact that she can easily safe jump into the extra overhead or go low after there is a level of mix there and it makes you more hesitant to use parry which means you're she's actually able to mix you high low from the safe jumps so she has a, a ton of offensive options in the corner on top of being extremely safe so i think she's definitely one of the best characters in the game i think she's really underrated in the west and japan has consistently put her very high i'm not even considering modern it's funny i think these two characters are the best modern characters in the game. Modern Chun is stupid. Like level two and level three with modern Chun is so dumb. Same thing with Luke with modern level one. There's a, a really actual strong use case for using these characters in modern. Super strong character, easy S for me. Main question, would Chun be S if Lashard didn't exist? Hell yes. <laughs> No more questions from the chat, please. Oh my God, Chun down players, it's it's a terminal illness. Once Chun becomes your waifu, you can never accept that this character is top tier, even though she's been top tier so many times in the history of Street Fighter. Jamie, Jamie recently got some buffs and I think they're pretty good. So after Capcom Cup, the, the mini patch came out and Jamie was the character that received some of the most significant changes. I almost want to put him in B, but I'm going to put him in C for now. The issue with Jamie is that there's a little too many requirements to get into doing good damage and playing Street Fighter 6 to the same degree as most other characters. I think he's much improved now, and I think he's probably going to be a real big threat in the next season, but his, his neutral just isn't quite as strong as other characters. And even though they gave him many other ways to get into or effective ways to get into his higher levels like the throw buff to be able to drink after is huge for jamie i think he's significantly stronger because of that i still think that his damage is really low if he doesn't get that that drink going and therefore there's a lot of rounds where jamie just doesn't really get to play the game i think he's really close to being in b tier it's just that i think too many times he fails to power up and show his strengths but yeah, if he gets to level three, he's really freaking good. People underrate the usage of his palms. I think, you know, his sweep is amazing. His dive kick, people like to meme on it all the time, but it has its uses. Like having a dive kick like that to throw bait is definitely powerful. He has a lot of tools. So I, I would be worried about Jamie. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at this character for the next patch to actually jump up the tier list. Um, his main problem, I think, is Oki and damage in level like when he's in level zero and level one. Luke can do dry rush low forward and kill you in the final round. Jamie cannot do that, right? He, he requires more hits to make that happen. So that's what keeps him down lower. Guile. Guile I, I, for some reason, I see a lot of people putting Guile really low in tier list lately. I'm going to put him in A. My gut wants to put him higher. I feel like Guile is consistently the most underrated character or one of the characters that gets the most contention for his placement. I might move him up here. I think Guile is so good, and I don't even know who is supposed to beat Guile besides JP. And even then, is it is it that bad of a matchup? I know Guile players like to, to act like JP beats Guile 7-3, but I do not agree with that. I think JP has an advantage, but I think Guile can definitely play that matchup. It's not like Dalsim Zangief. I think other than JP, does he have any bad matchups? I think he at least goes even or beats the rest of the cast. So his, his fireball game is absurd in this version. His normals go full screen. He has really high damage output. His ability to actually have a high low mix, dry rush behind fireball. Like this, this character is one of the, or maybe the strongest dry rush fireball characters in the game. I'll put him in A for now, but we'll see. The thing about Guile also is that he makes so many other matchups miserable. So this is another thing where it's polarizing because without actually carefully waiting on the matchups, you can underrate or overrate this character because I think he also destroys so much of the cast. I think so many characters are invalidated by Guile. So he has extremely polarizing matchups and then a few matchups where he's not strong in. That to me makes me want to put him in S. I'll put him in A for now. It, it's tough. It's tough to, to, to actually make a placement based on that. Kimberly, don't let James Chen see this. I'm going to put her in B. I don't think Kimberly is that bad like people um, it's also a little unhinged i feel like how people talk about kimberly so her problem is her offense is extremely strong but she does lower damage on average right because she has meterless ways to combo from overhead 
She has some of the strongest strike throw pressure in the game. She has good air options like her regular jump in versus elbow drop is a legitimate, uh, pretty legitimate mix up that can actually bait out anti-airs and allow her to approach. She has some of the most ways to get in out of every character in the game, a random r OD run overhead, things of that nature. Her, her walk speed is extremely good, um, plus on block low to prevent you from walking away. Um, but she needs more openings to kill you. So that's that's not great. It, that's actually a big downside in the world of Street Fighter 6, where like, once again, Luke will just kill you so fast. Um, that's a that's a big downside. And also her defense, you know, she has no reversal essentially. Um, so her defense is definitely poor in this game compared to other characters. So those are big downsides. So she she would be on the low side of B to me. But I think her offense, she's one of those characters that can always win or always lose. I'm going to put her in, in low B. We'll see if I change my mind. Jury. I also see people rating Jury pretty low these days. I think Jury is like the essence of Street Fighter 6, in my opinion. She has plus unblocked mediums, obnoxious normal, great strike throw, and uh, you know her fireball drive rush is right up there with Guile's. Her ability to use her store to constantly steal turns over and over in the corner makes her... her Corner pressure, absurd. Uh, strong level two. Uh, her level two is pretty underrated. Her feng shui, feng shui engine allows her to get high-low mix-ups, really good pressure, nasty burnout sequences. Um, she won the million. I think Jury is a solid eight tier. So apparently, from what I know, her, her big weaknesses are characters like Guile right there, even though she can still overcome that. I don't know what her other bad matchups are, maybe DJ. Um, so I think she has some issues with projectile characters who can kind of mitigate her ability to use the fireballs to approach and get in. So characters that can stop out like Guile and DJ, where they kind of just shut on her projectile game, can slow her down and give her a hard time. So I think she's extremely good. Her corner pressure is some of the best in the game, man. I'm going to put her in A tier. I think she's probably below Guile. So we'll see where this goes for now. Dalsim. Dalsim's one of the weaker characters in the game, in my opinion, but I I'm always kind of skeptical. Like, is that really all there is? Will he be fleshed out more? He's the character I'm probably least authorized to talk about because I, I don't play Dalsim, but I see Dalsim so uh, not often that it's hard for me to be a good judge of the character's strengths. However, it does feel like he doesn't have quite the same ability to set up fireball teleport mix and approach. I mean, parry kind of reduced a lot of that uh, ability for Dalsim. His damage is definitely low relative to how this game operates. Like a lot of characters are killing you in three hits and that threat lets them get throw loops on you because um, you don't want to die. So the threat of all that damage makes you sit there and take the throw. And so I feel like in this kind of a meta, Dalsim is a little bit disadvantaged in that in that sense. I might put him in C for now. Having to play the long con in this game is generally not good with a lot of the top tiers, but that's kind of me viewing him against the top tiers. Like I said, his matchup spread overall might be really even or pretty good. I don't know that, but I, I'm just envisioning him how he plays against the best characters in the game, and I don't think he does great against the best characters in the game. Dalsim feels unexplored. I agree. I feel like there's still potential for this character for sure, but I would... I. I'm kind of basing this opinion based on how he would perform against the best characters, and I don't think he does great. Poor defensive options, level one's not invincible. Yeah, I think I think the mechanics of this game don't lend to a successful Dalsim experience at the moment. Honda, I don't even want to put him in D. I think Honda's better than Dalsim. This character is dumb. <laughs> I'll put it that way. I don't think Honda is at all a consistent character, but he's abs he's like Kim, but worse, where like anybody on any day could lose to Honda. Honda is extremely volatile. His headbutt game is ridiculous. His butt slam is so stupid. Even though there's distinct counters to butt slam, if you make a mistake at any moment, his punish counter butt slam combos are so damaging. His neutral is okay. Sand medium punch is a good button and his headbutt is, and is basically his neutral. It basically depends on, are your perfect parries good th this day? If your perfect parries are on point, and also you're guessing your perfect parry on butt slam correctly, then he's gonna fall apart. But if your perfect parries are not on part, he might just steamroll you in 30 seconds and then GG on to the next, right? So Honda is an extremely inconsistent character with high firepower, and anybody on any day could win or lose with him. For consistency's sake, very bad. I do not do not think he's a consistent character to take the tournaments. I do not think he will consistently perform well. You can make deep runs. I mean, we saw, what was it, Key in the CPT Japan? He eliminated Nemo and he got, did he get top eight or he got top 16 at least? Maybe he got like ninth. 
and CPT Japan. So we've seen people do like deep runs before and really stack tournaments, it's possible, but yeah, he's not a great character. Having a command grab though, I mean, he's still a, a, a character with a decently damaging command grab abilities to establish plus frames and forcing you to block. And if he drive rushes at you, it's a mix up between command grab or not. So he definitely still has strengths beyond just his headbutt and butt slam game. But it really does revolve around those two special moves and perfect parry will beat them. But perfect parry is also an unreliable solution. So I think he's just an unreliable character either way. Ken, has Ken fallen off? You know, in the beginning of Street Fighter VI, first couple weeks, it was all Ken and JP. Emergency patch now broken, absolutely will, will never recover. How can the community go on with Ken and JP running amok? It, has he fallen off? He was top one for a while, then he was top two behind JP. Is he still S? I don't know, I might put him in A. We'll see how S shapes up. I can think of a few other characters I would put above him right now. I think Ken is amazing in this game. Stan Fierce is a bonkers button. Jinrai is just too simple and too strong of a special move to shred the opponent's drive meter. You can just do low forward or heavy punch into Jinrai and just get to master like overnight. The mix up between the low follow up, not doing the low follow up, the overhead and the drive meter damage that it does even if people decide to block it all out. It's just absurd. You can just do that over and over and then just put people in burnout. His corner carry is absurd. His back throw still puts you all the way back into the corner. So either you get back thrown into the corner or you get, get shimmied mid screen, you get carried to the other corner with his like run Tatsu conversions. His low four dry rush is amazing. Great DP. On top of all that, he has Dragon Lash to get in. Dragon Lash is a risk though. I will give that caveat. I think Dra Dragon Lash is super strong, but I mean, I feel like the other characters I'm thinking of in S, aren't taking that risk. That is an amazing tool to have, but it can be perfect paired and it can be DI'd. And when I, with the characters I'm thinking in S right now are characters that win with all that oppression and all that strength, but are safe while doing it. And I think Ken is slightly more unsafe than these characters I'm thinking of, so I'm putting him in the top of A for now. Yeah, you can also jab Dragon Lash, right? You might just die and eat shit, right? It's not, I'm not saying that move is bad. It's amazing move, but the other characters can be as oppressive and neutral and, and on offense in S tier without having any risk. That's what I'm thinking. Blanca, this guy's the talk of the town. You know, Mena just wrapped up Evo Japan, winning with Blanca. He won CEO, the first biggest major for Street Fighter VI in the beginning of the season with primarily Blanca in the end. And then, you know, Problem X won the Capcom Cup LCQ with Blanca and people have been posting his level two highlights all over the place. His level two is undoubtedly at least minimum top three, maybe top one in the game. His install is ridiculous. He has the most defensive options in the game, I believe you could argue. You know, he has OD up ball, jump back, Blanca ball, and then, you know, the rest of the universal mechanics, right? The fact that he can do jump back Blanca ball to beat throws and be plus on block or get a full combo after if he's in level two is ridiculous. Crazy good options on defense. His offense is amazing. His neutral is not as strong as some of the other S tier, A tier characters, but he does have Blanca ball to compensate for that. He doesn't have the great, great is low forward. His crouching medium punch is insane though. His crouching medium punch is an incredibly underrated button. That's like his low forward. It doesn't hit low, but it's almost impossible to whiff punish and goes so far and then can it's like a great disjoint that he can do into a drive rush cancel to get the party started. Um, He's up here. He's definitely, I don't know if he's an S tier. I think he's an A tier. I think he is so strong. I might put him in front of the jury right now. These characters are, just seem better to me. The thing about Blanca is that he, he keeps having more and more potential. He's the most technical character in the game, I believe. And sorry, I didn't even bring up the Blanca Chan, right? Things just keep getting worse and worse against Blanca. If if things go south and they, they pop level two and then they get Blanca Chan on top of you, there's no good answer, right? Throw or not, you die. He actually gets true high lows with those kind of mix as well. Level two is reason to be S alone. You could argue that. I'm gonna put him here, but I definitely could see these guys, Blanca being up here as well. People are getting more and more advanced with their Blanca tech. So things are getting worse with Blanca. We might see a lot more Blancas in the future. We'll see. Bro, just because Mena is a genius with Blanca and maybe other two or three players in the world doesn't mean Blanca is A, he is C for sure. Okay, DJ. I don't want to put Blanca in S tier because I'm putting DJ straight to S, S tier. I think this character is, is absurd. DJ forces you to take so many risks against him. To be fair to DJ and DJ players, there is some level of risk involved in what he's doing. You can DI him, essentially. If he does the two hit fireball or if he does Sobot, if you randomly press DI predicting those moves are coming out, he will get DI. However, 
if you don't take that risk to DI him, you are forced to play his game 1,000% of the time. You, you can't do any low risk options on reaction to stop what he's doing. So with Ken Dragonlash, if you are committed to focusing on the Dragonlash, you can jab it and get a combo. That doesn't exist with DJ. There's nothing that you can really commit to to maybe even the Dry Rush, and even that is a huge toss up. Even if you, you focus 110% of your brain power on, on checking the Dry Rush, there's a huge chance he's gonna warp speed into your grill and just jab the shit out of you into a full combo. So sometimes it's better to just let him Dry Rush, which is also obscene. But if you focus 110% of your brain power on stopping Sobot with a DI, you can't. It's a prediction. He forces you to take risks to stop his game plan. The other characters are playing by doing low risk options that give them extremely strong offense. DJ is doing options that you are forced to take action against and you are forced to do risky things. So you're, you're forced to either jump forward at a weird time and predict a Sobot or back sway, something of that nature and try to get a jump in or you're forced to do a DI. His ability to back sway out of strings means that you also can't take your turn back against him. You know, he can do a, a, a negative on block block string and you try to at least put him in block zone to start establishing your offense or take your turn back and maybe building space. Then he'll just back sway out of the way and then sway and then get the uh, the punish counter extension on the sway in and then you die and lose all your health. His damage is too high. OD Beyblade from full screen, he just chucks that out with like very little risk because you can't even jump in on it because it just has the hitbox up by his head for some reason. Then he can just dry rush behind it and get a, a combo follow up from pretty much anywhere on screen. So he shuts down a lot of zoning games as well. His zoning game is actually really good. Fake fireball, regular fireball, double hit fireball, and then OD fireball. An amazing combination of, of uh, fireball moves, harassing with Sobot to get your drive meter down, uh, warp speed, drive rush, his crouching medium kick, his his sweep being safe on block, why, that to me feels like a remnant of the past. I'm really not sure why his crouching medium kick is negative six on block with that much pushback. That move should be negative 10. I do not understand why he can just walk around pressing crouching medium kick. <laughs> like On top of all these things that I'm, I'm referring to, he has an extremely safe sweep option. Um, so this character forces you to take risks like no other characters, otherwise you just die. Um, so yeah, I think he's absurd. I'll, I'd, I'd put him below Luke and Chun-Li because of the fact that there is risk in his game plan, but he's definitely one of the characters that feels the worst to fight. I don't feel as bad fighting a Luke as I do fighting a DJ, even though I think Luke's better. You can't combo his crouching medium kick. I'd trade safe sweep for comboable low. Okay. I mean, you could just have a sweep that's not safe and not have a comboable low. Like what I'm saying is you shouldn't have anything. You deserve, DJ does not deserve more, he deserves far less. Those other characters that don't have comboable lows, I think they should just get rid of it. You have everything else compensated for you already. Also, I didn't mention his up kicks. His up kicks have like way too much horizontal range. So anyways, his zoning is good. I I'm just complaining now, sorry. I don't wanna, get I'm getting too far deep into Complainville. I try to keep that, that off stream time, off content time. DJ's really good. Manon. Manon is not as good as DJ, but I don't think she's terrible. I think people overstate Manon's weaknesses, but she definitely has issues. Her buttons are actually pretty good. So her buttons, what they're good for is counter poking other people's buttons. Her stand heavy kick is her one like big footsie normal that forces you to take action. But then beyond that, it's very difficult to whiff punish her buttons. She doesn't have really extended lingering hurt boxes like a lot of other characters would have. And then she has forward advancing moves like stand medium punch, which help her cover awkward ranges. So I think her buttons in neutral are actually very good. The problem is they don't lead to much reward. So she can land a lot of straight hits and without doing like medium punch to drive rush cancel, she's not gonna get much reward from it. So that I think is a problem with her game plan where other characters, if they land these random buffered normals, they're gonna kill you. Uh, however, her command grab game, I think is really strong. She has the most flexible command grab uh, in the game, right? The fast up close ones and the forward advancing ones that are slower and you know, all those variations that she has means she can set up command grab traps and different take grab mind games in a much more flexible way than other characters, right? It's not just plus frame into command grab. And then her metal system lets her get into the game. When you're f fighting level four, level five Manon, like if Manon steamrolls you the first round, you are in a horrible position, right? Like she, that is actually horrible, but the risk reward on every interaction is terrible when she reaches level four, level five, the command grab or the strike, it's just gonna be so much damage. But like Jamie, that is not good out of the gate. So if things don't go well early on for Manon, they can stay being poor. 
um, which is what her big detriment is. Like she's not as explosive. So that that's definitely Manon's big weakness there. Her jump in is also very good. Her jump heavy kick is super strong. I don't think her jump arc is great for like cross ups or whatever, but her jump heavy kick is actually a real good way to sneak in over some anti airs. Like you can't late anti air this character with a lot of other characters in the game. I think she has some ways to make the job happen. Her overhead is, is not bad, but it's DI bait. So she has a lot of tools to approach and make things happen. Her overhead is super fast. Her heavy kick is great. They all lose a DI. So she has a lot of risk with her strong tools. And, you know, her burnout pressure is also some of the best in the game. Her sand medium punch pretty much loops into itself with her overhead. There are situations where Manon really excels, but it's also a big caveat on can she get started early enough? Because she, she gets started too late in the set. You're essentially going to not be as scared of the risk reward. Her Oki after command grab is not amazing it doesn't like loop perfectly into itself she definitely has ways to mix up her approach with the jump drive rush command grab overhead different options she can mix in but there's answers for all of them um so she can try to overload your mental stack and mix you up with the approach but yeah basically if it doesn't go well for her early on it's an uphill battle for her where other characters that are better than her just are explosive from round start full like characters that are like all i need is full drive meter they're in a better position than Manon. Manon needs full drive meter and uh, metals. However, her command grab game is good. Manon is still terrifying, so I don't think she's trash. She's also in that tier of characters that can just beat you. She's still a grappler with a forward advancing command grab that can build up enough damage to kill you in three command grabs, right? So still very scary in the right situation, right hands, but consistency over a long tournament, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bet on her in a super long, super stack tournament. Marisa, I'm gonna put her up here as well. She's both a scrub killer and also a really solid character. Her armor game is extremely volatile with her Gladius and then her ability to approach a Superman punch. Her damage is obscene if you are forced to make, uh, take guesses with the rever reversals, for example, and you guess wrong. Uh, one crouching medium punch drive rush cancel could be the end of your life. She does struggle in the neutral in some sense. I think her neutral is okay. She definitely has stronger options. Um, like if she catches you on a, a whiff punish with her stand heavy kick and has good range, it's just a slow button. That's a big punish counter juggle that she gets into starting the momentum. She has a command grab. So she and she has ability to avoid burnout with her stance options with armor. So she has a lot of interesting armor options and abilities to get over fireballs with the Superman punch. So she definitely has a lot of tools to counter things that would normally slow down a big body character, but she's slower. She can be susceptible to being rushed down. She's weaker to throws in some sense because her reversals lose to throw. And uh, if you have good lows, a lot of her armor loses to lows essentially. So characters with super strong low forwards that are gonna be approaching with that button in mind, they can stop a lot of their armor shenanigans. But she has a lot of unique tools with the way her armor works and the fact that she still has armor even in burnout. She definitely has unique answers to certain situations to armor through forward advancing special moves and things of that nature. So she has unique advantages and unique disadvantages and the damage to back it up. So I think this is a low A tier character. Uh, good Marissa is extremely scary. Um, and even a bad Marissa, it can be extremely scary. She's she's she can be random. <laughs> she has a bit of Honda in her. You can definitely lose to a Marissa player that's just trying to party. She has that ability in her, man. But she also has shown that she's not like a Honda and that she has a solid foundation as well if you want to excel with her at a, at a high level. So I think she's low A tier. JP, JP, the talk of the town here, well, at least at one point in, in time. I used to know this character pretty well, but have things changed since the Capcom Cup pa patch? They nerfed very heavily the damage on OD Amnesia which in a lot of circumstances, you could do obscene amounts of damage. In fact, it was more optimal to counter a DI with OD Amnesia than to counter it with DI itself. So they nerfed the scaling on that to make it, they also nerfed his crouching heavy punch to make it a little bit more susceptible to jump in so you can't perform it as late. They also nerfed his meter building, I believe, with the OD Amnesia. Like there's a bunch of other small nerfs, which I think actually made an impact. I don't know if he's S anymore. I would have originally put him like, top two because OD Amnesia made the risk reward on throw looping JP so poor, but now it's really worth it to throw JP, especially mid screen because mid screen throws on OD Amnesia, he doesn't get a guaranteed punish on that, right? There's a kind of a mix up. So you can drive rush in and throw him in return, or you can maybe parry and, and try to bait out a move from him. So I don't know if he's low S or top A, but I think he was definitely, I think those nerfs actually matter. His crouching medium punch is ridiculous. They haven't changed that. His drive rush, crouching medium punch, his drive rush, crouching low, 
His crushing medium kick is one of the best in the game. You know, talk about a trade off, right? We talk about DJ. They gave both these characters crazy crashing medium kicks because JP crashing medium kick doesn't cancel, but that thing propels them like a half screen forward and is such an obnoxious situation. When you get hit by crashing medium kick by JP, it's an annoying spot to be in. <laughs> but I don't know. When I fight him as Ed, I don't feel like anywhere near like these characters. To me, I feel like he's here, but I could be. This is my experience on the other side of it since switching and I you know I haven't been playing with the best JPs in the world or nothing like I'd rather fight a JP than a, a Guile <laughs> personally I don't know what do you guys think am I crazy I feel like he's top of A I might rearrange this I might move him up we'll see Cammy what do I think about Cammy my bias with Cammy is I think Cammy's always given JP a hard time when I play JP when I play Ed I hate this character I don't know where to put her um she's either before or after JP is what I feel her damage isn't the best from like most random hits but her neutral is really good her dive kick in this game is I think is very strong her walk speed is very good certain characters just have to guess like her anti-projectile tools make it so that a lot of characters that slow you down using projectiles she just nullifies them with her spin knuckle her jump game um, hooligan is like a real mix up now. She can just rob you with a random hooligan grab into level three, things of that nature. I think this character, she's overrated. I think she's highly underrated. <laughs> I think this character has been underrated for a long time, but I'm not sure her matchup spread. If you're leaving this to my bias, I'd put her up here. But I can see that she might have some matchup issues with certain matchups that can that can knock her down. I think she's really good. I think she's underrated. The only thing that she lacks compared to these other characters is her average damage per interaction is lower, but I think she's really good. You think Cammy's better than Ken? I think she might be. I think Ken is easier, but I just think the fact that you have jump and dive kick is huge. I'm not married to any of these opinions. I can see her being lower, higher. She's hard for me to place, because like I said, I think she I think she beats the characters I play pretty bad, especially Ed. So <laughs> when I play Ed, to me, Cammy's Cammy is problem number one but I'm not sure her matchup spread. That's the problem with me doing a tier list, right? Obviously, I'm going to have mistakes in this tier list when it comes to differentiating between like the minutia with some top tier characters because I don't know their matchup spreads 100%. And I think that influences where you would place them. Lily. Lily, I also think is underrated. Listen, all these low tier characters I'm putting here, I think are underrated. I think Lily might be like here. So Lily has really some really strong normals. A lot of them are susceptible to DI, but she has great pokes. She doesn't have like a low forward drive rush game, but basically her game plan of securing the stores to be able to approach and then have plus frames from pretty much anywhere on screen is actually a really effective game plan, in my opinion, if she can get it stored. So there are some caveats, like certain characters prevent her from getting her game plan going. Uh, but she's very obnoxious. She's very obnoxious. And there's there's Lily rounds for sure. Like if Lily gets an initial stock and then gets the hit and builds the stock again. Then Condor spires in and then keeps the plus frames, then does a command grab, then gets a store and then just keeps doing it over and over. Like like she's a kind of a degenerate steamroll character. Even her cancels to the store kind of a mix up. You can try to do like parry drive rush option, option select to beat her getting the store or guests on the versions you can DI. So she's constantly forcing you to guess and burn drive meter and drive reversal to get her off of you. I think she has like a valid game plan. Some characters can stop her from getting that started more easily than others. Like JP, for example, can use a uh, spike. But like if you play other characters who don't have those kind of options, if you aren't approaching her at all times, you, you kind of have a break in neutral. She can just get the store and then spire in and get her game plan going. So she forces you to approach her in a lot of ways. And when that happens, she has strong pokes to kind of check you on the way in as well. People talk like this character is useless. I don't think that's true. I think she's very one dimensional. I think she's kind of one note. But uh, yeah, I think Lily could be, be bottom of B, arguably. Yeah, I wouldn't mind either. Sure, why not? For the, the shock value, move her up. It's the same thing. <laughs> if you're going in order, it's the same thing. Zangief. So Zangief. I'll drop him to D. So remember the thought experiment I had earlier. Remember at the beginning of the video, I had mentioned if a character has slightly losing matchups to every character in the game, they're probably going to be really low tier. However, that doesn't mean they can't win any game. I'm not saying Zangief only has slightly bad matchups. I'm saying that just because I'm putting him in D tier does not mean he cannot win games or have good runs or beat you or my ass in a random set, whatever, right? I think Zangief in this game definitely has some problems with you know zoning characters he has some issues with his combos extensions his anti -air reliability i think there's a few things that make him less stable and tricky to play for not as much reward and i think that adds up over time to making him just a really inconsistent character to play i do like how they've made him in this game though so i think zangief has a problem where either he has more of a dynamic sort of Oki situation or he's just a coin flip factory. Street Fighter V Zangief was dumb as hell 
because it, you just landed heavy SPD and you're literally just flipping coins. Just like pure 100% coin flips. Very little nuance to it. It changed when they added V-Shift, of course. And this game, there's a lot more nuance to his Drive Rush Oki after SPD. You can do like Drive Rush Sweep, Drive Rush Stand Like it into a Drive Rush Cancel, like, or Drive Rush and then try to overextend that driver to get another SPD. There's more nuance beside beyond just the pure in range for SPD after another SPD pure Oki, which I think is a healthier sort of system. However, I think the problem is in neutral, he is suffering and getting conversions, getting knockdowns, and uh, also his anti-air, his, his lariat does fail in some situations where I think it shouldn't. That said, he's still dangerous in a lot of matchups. He has a lot of tools against that, I've noticed. His stand fierce is very good, that the armor on stand fierce offers a lot of utility. He has a lot of unique moves it's just that a lot of them do offer answers to problems that he will face i just think they're all kind of tricky to use so i think geef is very tricky to use in this game and that makes him inconsistent to win a lot of matchups that's my impression of the character i still think he can win on any given day a great geef player can still win on any given day once again just because he's here does not mean he's never able to win a set or is the absolute underdog in every single set i don't, do not think that's the case I just think, once again, for consistency over a long bracket with the best players in the world, Zangief is not your bet. Rashid. Rashid is the the best DLC character. I think Rashid is absurd. He's up here. Rashid is one of the characters that offers actual like mix-up potential because he still has that whirlwind roll style mix-up from Street Fighter V just around his, uh, his Cyclone now. He can do the light version, which is a uh, frame trap, but negative on block. Or he can do the medium or heavy versions, which is not an airtight frame trap, but gives him plus frames and he can he can approach behind them to get his turn again, right? So he has that basic uh, built-in mix-up ability to steal turns or to check you for trying to check him from stealing a turn, get his offense going. I think he has some decent buttons in neutral, a strong drive rush, a decent fireball game. His whirlwind uh, offers a, a pretty decent angle to cover from a distance. His enhanced system allows allows him to have a lot of flexibility in approaching with eagle spikes from a distance and enhanced spinning mixers. You get plus frames. He's a very tricky character. He has a lot of weird approaches. His his air Arabian cyclone allows him to get out of the corner. He has you know the enhanced jump from full screen cross up. His slide through fireballs and really strong pressure on top of all of that. And then of course his level two. So I think Rashid is a extremely tricky and flexible character with natural offensive mix-ups built in beyond his basic strike throw like a lot of the rest of the cast are relying on level two is often a checkmate button i mean you can just pop level two in the beginning of a round and just win and the damage is obscene like i would say his average damage for is is kind of low like cami however in a lot of situations with level two behind him he gets ridiculous damage like obscene amounts of damage i think Rashid is really good in that sense. Super strong character. His anti airs occasionally lose, but to be honest, I think the problem is more with Luke and other characters' jump ins being broken than Rashid. Uh, you know, Luke and Ken jump fierce punches are kind of stupid, and I think that's the I think the issue is those characters, not Rashid. But that is a risk with this character playing against certain matchups. That's uh, sometimes his his mixers can get stuffed, but I don't think it's that big of a problem. He's still an amazing character. Super top tier. Um, just kind of tricky to play. Aki. So this character, when when she released, everybody acted like she was terrible. Myself included. I was like, I didn't think she was terrible, but I thought she definitely had problems. Her neutral game felt very strange to play. However, I quickly recognized that she had a pretty strong offensive flow chart, right? So her main strength is drive rush behind fireball. And then she has high low mixed beyond that. Good uh, strike throw, throw loop situation in the corner. And then she is able to kind of maul you, basically. Her offense is very strong when she gets going. And under the correct circumstances with the poison enhancement, um, she she kills you. And then also her burnout situation is like Manon's on crack. She's definitely, uh, you know, Broski calls her a burnout queen. I think she's the queen of burnout as well. Her forward advancing medium punch paired with her coward crouch allows her to do like crazy extensions and push you around the screen when you're in burnout. Get the stun, do mad damage. Her problems though, her jabs and her confirms like from jabs are pretty weak. They buff the range on her her stand light punch, I believe, which helped solve situations where you were like doing like a jab, jab check and the jab would whiff, um, which improves both your defense from checking things and your offensive confirms. Oh, crouch light punch, thank you. 
Right, so they improved the range on that because that you would often do like jab with jab on accident and just barely graze them and then like get a special move to come out, which could cost you or they're mashing behind it. You get punish countered for the whiff. She also doesn't have like a low four drive rush. She's not that type of character, which means her neutral when she's playing like the footsie range, when she's not able to set up her fireball, the drive rush behind it is less scary and less rewarding. Another big problem with her is her anti-airs kind of have that Rashid effect where she's occasionally gonna get stuffed. Uh, her stand heavy kick doesn't have the best uh, hitbox. She also has crouch heavy kick for other angles to 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 use as well. And But her heavy punch whip is pretty good, but her heavy punch whip is also not, I think, immediately air invincible. So basically she has to think a lot when doing anti-airs. She does have options for almost every single angle, but having to think that much is not great. I think she's kind of in B tier. I think she's right around here. I think Kimberly's might be better than Aki. She's basically an offensive flowchart character. I think that the player base has improved collectively in utilizing her offensive tools and her offensive flowchart to keep the momentum moving beyond just trying to play basic neutral. If you try to play a basic neutral game with her, she's gonna fall apart. That's not what she's built for. She has a lot of sneaky tools or her command dash and get around certain things. Her OD stabby hands lets her get in over projectiles and get in for plus frames. So she has ways to get over the mid range when she can't set up her fireball to to approach behind it, which makes covers up some of her problems in neutral and her offense kind of holds her in the spot. So I think she's she's decent. She's getting a lot of buffs. I think she might be she might be moving on up. OK, and the last one I have here. Ed boy. This character is interesting because I had to figure out how what we supposed to do. So his up close game in mid screen is not the greatest. He suffers from pre patch Aki syndrome where his stand light punch has no range. So he's very difficult to use to pressure people mid screen with his jabs and to defensively check things with his jabs because they end up just whiffing. He doesn't have like a plus on block medium. He doesn't have the furthest range mediums besides his stand medium kick. Basically, all his buttons at the close range where like a Luke would be playing with crutch medium punch and things that or Ken would be playing with his medium punch. Ed is a little bit weaker at. He wants to play a little bit further out and he has the moves for that, right? Stand medium kick is a 10 frame move, but it goes like half screen, great range on that. Um, his stand light kick is six frames, but it has really far range as well. And then of course his flickers, right? He has the ability to use flickers like a projectile um, punch that covers half screen. You can charge them up and play mind games with them, charge them up, pull people in for plus frames or cancel into your dashes to bait people out from trying to jump or trying to do parries or things or DI or things of that nature. So he wants to kind of play at a more further distance mid range game, pull people in, go for a strike throw mix and kind of reset to that situation. So I think he's very good at that. He makes you guess a lot in neutral in that sense. You know, when you play an ed that's on crack you're guessing a lot they're doing random charge flicker dash random fully charged flicker like you don't know when to di when to jump when to sit there you try to move you get grabbed by the flicker you get pulled into a combo so that's definitely a strength of his and then also uh he has an uppercut to kind of tie it together his uppercut is decent and has some drawbacks it can be empty jump it doesn't have horizontal range so you can also you know bait it out at a far range and then his cross cut situation is not very good. So he's susceptible a bit more to cross ups and he doesn't have the best range on his low. So like walking out of his pressure is pretty good. He has to take risks to like charge up a flicker to pull you back in or to punish you for trying to walk away from pressure. So level two is pretty good. It's not like Blanca JP le tier level two, but in the right situations, it can do huge damage with the right setups. You know, those decent combos I told you guys about. You do huge damage or if they're in burnout already you can like push people to the corner so i think he's like a a tier level two i don't think he's s tier level two but you know i think we'll put him somewhere in b tier the fact that he's taking risks in neutral i think he's constantly mixing you up but because he's constantly taking risks you might get hit out of nowhere his flicker game is all projectiles so characters that can counter projectiles really well can shut him down. Like fighting Cam is a nightmare because she just goes around all his projectiles, right? It's still early with him. I think he might improve. He feels good, but you can tell the power difference. <laughs> it's like when I play JP, I'm like, yeah, I feel powerful. When I'm playing Ed, I'm like, ah, yeah, you're I'm dealing with your game a lot of the times. It's kind of like a bad DJ. So DJ forces you to take risks to stop him, but you are heavily rewarded if you guess correctly on the risk and you're constantly harassing them. Ed forces you to take risks to stop him from doing bullshit mid screen as well, but it's a little bit easier to stop safely. Like there's a lot of jump angles you can abuse. Um, and you can also, he just, he's not as rewarded as much as DJ if you guess wrong on his, on his bullshit. So I think everyone above him is playing a much safer or more rewarding game typical mains downplaying their character you guys honestly think ed's what s tier a tier character like be real 
So I'm going to leave him here for now. Call me a down player if you want. All that leaves now is Akuma. We all know it to be true. But upon further review, Luke's still better. And that's it. That's all I got. Listen, I know you just want to go to this video and click on the section with your character and either completely agree with me downplaying your character or, or rage in the comments about me, um, you know, overhyping your character's strengths. Listen, it's just my opinion. Once again, tier lists are not the great, greatest way to discuss the characters in the meta. It's just a way to kind of get the conversation going about where a character might lie. But there's a lot more nuance that is not discussed here. I don't mean every character. I don't know every matchup. So don't go too hard on me in the comments. That's, that's all I'm going to say here. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.